that, let me start by sharing with you why power distribution is so important. And let me explain that by using a very, very simple slide. And this slide is a collection of ideas from Intel. Um, so let me start by defining the two axes for this particular graph. So the y-axis is called Fmax, and that represents the maximum operating frequency of an IC, and in this case, let's call that as a microprocessor. The x-axis is your supply voltage VCC. In any microprocessor or IC, around the nominal operating voltage of that IC, the relationship between Fmax and VCC is a linear function, and that is what is shown over here. In a transistor, we always define a wall that we call as the reliability wall. And this represents the maximum voltage you can allow across the gate oxide of a transistor. And that voltage defines the maximum electric field that is allowed in that gate oxide. So let us say that in this particular example, the maximum allowable voltage is 1.65 volts. Or in other words, if you exceed 1.65 volts, you would cause the breakdown of the transistor. So in this particular example, let us say that the nominal operating voltage of this transistor is 1.55 volts. Since these transistors are being powered by the power distribution network, and because there are parasitics in the power distribution network, this voltage is gonna vary as a function of time. And let us say that that variation is plus or minus 100 millivolts. This plus or minus 100 millivolts represents the power supply noise. On the high side, you're less than the reliability wall. But on the low side, you go down to 1.45 volts, which is nothing but 1.55 volts minus 100 millivolts. When a company like Intel specs their microprocessor, they will always spec Fmax for this processor at the frequency corresponding to 1.45 volts, which in this case is 665 megahertz. As a designer, my goal is always to maximize Fmax. And one way to do that is by using VCC as a control norm. So let us say that the designer decides to increase VCC by around 50 millivolts to 1.6 volts. The minute you do that, you're now closer to the reliability wall, which means that you no longer have the luxury of allowing plus or minus 100 millivolts variation across the power supply. That has to decrease. And let us say that by redesigning the power distribution net network, that variation is reduced to plus or minus 50 millivolts. So on the high side, you're still less than the reliability wall. However, on the low side, you have now reduced your voltage from 1.6 to 1.5 volts, which corresponds to an operating frequency of 705 megahertz. Or in other words, just by changing the power supply noise from 100 millivolts down to 50 millivolts, you have increased the operating frequency of the microprocessor from 665 megahertz to roughly around 705 megahertz, which is an increase of 50 megahertz. So the case I'm trying to make over here is that whatever you do on the power distribution network has a direct effect on the operating frequency of the IC or the microprocessor, and that is why designing a clean and good power distribution network is ex extremely critical for high-speed signaling.